happening to me now when people want to behave as though certain images don't mean anything. And I thought of this when I saw Larry Clark's kids. And I went back, like, in circles of progressive white friends, and I said, oh, God, you know, the racial politics in terms of representation in this film really suck. And they really wanted to say it didn't matter. It didn't mean anything. And I was like, give me a fucking break. I mean, like, we know why the person who's brutally bashed to death is a dark-skinned black man. It's not, it's not, it, it, it's crucial that he's a dark-skinned black man. Because, in fact, people's antipathy to dark-skinned black men is actually much greater than their antipathy to black men in some kind of general way. Now, I, I feel that it's frightening that as m mass media uses more certain kinds of representations for specific impact and effect, we're also being told that these images are not really that important. If we look at the recent movie Smoke, where the thief is a black kid. Now, in the original script, it's based on a story by Paul Auster. In the story, there's no racial identification of, of the character. So when I talked to Wayne Wang, who directed the film, I said, why did you choose to make the thief black? And he, you know, he putters and stutters around, but he can't say. He will not say, because the only thing he can say is, this will give this movie more zip to make the thief black. It will make it more compelling to people. It'll give a kind of good guy, bad guy quality to it. And it will just make it all the more stimulating. Because he would have to admit that the fact that he simultaneously in making that choice is also reproducing certain kinds of racial stereotypes. Nobody wants to lay claim to consciously constructing these images that perpetuate white supremacy, racism, etc. Give me your words, motherfucker! You disrespect me! This gives to me what I'm And the, the ironic thing is that I can sit in classrooms, in universities, where my students don't want to accept that someone consciously creates that representation. Where are those transmissions you intercepted? What have you done with those plans? How come people didn't think about Dark Vader and the whole sort of sense of who decides what voice will constitute the villainous voice? If this is a consulship, where is the ambassador? I mean, what does it mean that media has such control of our imaginations that they don't want to accept that there are conscious manipulations taking place and that in fact we want to reserve, particularly for the arena of movie making, a certain sense of magic?